is a multimedia marketing and promotional machine with TV, magazines, streaming, radio, and internet advertising opportunities. There are tens of thousands of motorcycles. We reach the people who ride them. Born to Ride. Find out more at borntoride.com. Hey, how's it going? How are you? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I can't read. Sorry. It happens all the time. Gorgeous dog. All right, y'all have a good one. You've been an ugly dog. You know, you know. <laughs> hey, Greg, how's it going? Good, how are you doing? Just fine. How about yourself? How are you? Hey, Pastor, how are you doing? <laughs> Can't complain. I'm here. You're here. <laughs> she brought snacks. So we'll be here to take, you know, take uh, calls and stuff with you guys. Okay. We're going to be here the whole show. The whole show. Whatever comes up. Whatever we're talking about, we're going to do all that, but I think we're down. You know, we're just sitting talking about whatever's going on. Just down. Down? Snow down? <laughs> oh, boy. Wow, the sun's right here. Can I put sunglasses on? Is that <laughs> yeah, right? that's fine. <laughs> oh, no, just water's fine. Oh, thank you. Sorry, I left mine in the truck. Did you mind? Where did they plug? Um, She'll show you. She'll help you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> look, look right here. Gotcha. All right. Is Tater? Hi, Tater. <laughs> He's scrambling. He's trying to get everything ready here. <laughs> Boss Hard Radio. Fester Sheen. Yeah. Yep. Okay, hold on just a second. Who, who am I speaking? There's going to be a guy named Mudflap calling in. Okay. Yeah, let me do an intro for him okay. if you want me to. We'll be we'll with you in just a second. So put you on hold. Yeah. And welcome to this Thursday edition. It is May 7th, 2020, and uh, another week here, Mama another Dukes. Week. Yep. Went by really fast. Welcome yep. back, guys. Yep. Hey. We've uh, got uh, Greg Blackwell in the studio with us today. We spoke with him a few different times. Hey, guys. How you doing? Yeah, just fine. Welcome. And, of course, we've got uh, Debbie Galetti here, and Ron's sitting over there uh, doing some uh, behind-the-scenes work there while we've got greg here how are you doing greg i'm doing great how are you guys doing uh just awesome greg's not alone greg is not alone he's not alone no i'm not <laughs> greg uh, has a visitor he's got his uh friend with him i huh? think his friend is uh, you, camera shy do, do you want to see i can bring him up i think uh, I, Let, let's see come here victory come oh there victory we go. i love that name victory Aww. yeah he was named actually from an organization that was that actually sponsored him that, that paid for him they paid for the dog, and then I had some other organizations that actually paid for the training. But his his name came from Victory for 22 from the Helping Out Our American Heroes Foundation. Come oh, here, Victory Hugs. 22, American Hugs. Heroes. That's nice. Hugs. Oh, oh right, look at that go. shot right there. Yep. Can you see that? Oh, Victory so sees the snacks. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> look yeah. what Mama Dukes did this week. She outdid herself. Look at the oh, snacks she so brought. Last minute, like, I, I, <laughs> it was so last minute. I'm like, snacks, Buster. <laughs> Oh, that was nice. I'm going to grab a couple snacks here. Yeah. That's what they're there for. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I didn't have dinner. So. <laughs> I think that's, it runs every week into like dinner time. Mm -hmm. Fester's in there throwing stuff in the oven. Yep. <laughs> right. <laughs> Just a little bit past his dinner time. Well, uh, we've got Mudflap on the line here. Do you want to... Mudflap. Uh, yep. All yeah. right. Yeah, let me introduce uh, the, the Mudflap to you. And I need, like I, I love that Born to Ride and that Boss Hog Radio is giving us platform for veterans. You know, and we'd spend a few minutes a, a week... Uh, talking now, uh, Mudflap comes from. Uh, he's part of the Vietnam Veterans Legacy Veterans Motorcycle Club, and they are one of the largest uh, motorcycle clubs, uh, veterans motorcycle clubs on the planet. And they are doing some really good stuff um, that's actually hit home really close over the last several weeks. And and Mudflap is kind of like one of the guys that's been leading everything out. 
he's not part of my motorcycle club, but it's it's all still part of that veteran brotherhood that's here. So I asked actually asked him to call in to give us a give us kind of an idea of what they're doing. Well, good evening, Mud Flap. Just great. Hi, Mud Flap. How you doing tonight? <laughs> yeah, it's a nice day. So, how are you and uh, Greg um, connected here? And uh, they've known each other for a while in that. So he just kind of called me up. I wrote up an article, and he really was impressed with it. So he asked me to come speak tonight. Awesome. Welcome. We appreciate it. Hey, so Mudflap. I appreciate the platform. So. Yeah, so Mudflap, kind of tell them what you're doing and, and what, your, what your club is doing. I mean, it's, it's, this is an entire brotherhood. You know, every one of the, the motorcycle clubs that are out there, they do, they do some great things. And just kind of, you know, go into what your, you know, what your focus is and, and what's going on. Well, we, you know, we know that suicide has become the leading cause in the U.S. military um, since 2011. Historically, it had been low, uh, much lower than the civilian rate. But since 9-11, many more veterans, uh, young Americans have gone and fought. And we've come home with uh, the trauma and the difficulties of war and losing friends. Um, so for over the past five years, the Vietnam Vets Legacy Vets Motorcycle Club, uh, we've led a campaign uh, to end suicide, veteran suicide. We simply called it Operation Zero. Um, you know, suicide deaths per day has equaled or exceeded uh, 16 uh, since 2017, and another five to nine veterans every day on top of the 16 uh, attempt suicide. And even though death isn't the outcome, many of these veterans are still severely hurting themselves or other people. And moreover, those who attempt suicide are much more likely to attempt it again. Um, so rather than focusing on the fictitious and often toted number 22, we decided what is the goal? And it's zero veterans attempt suicide and hopefully save some lives. Um, we started back in uh, late 2014 after a couple of brothers committed suicide. And so it's, it's very personal to us. And with uh, our club having veterans all the way back from Vietnam till today, even some of our old veterans uh, have suffered and, and are still dealing thing with some of the trauma of combat have never really accepted or kind of gotten the help that they needed. So we were basically created this program as a national program. We designed the Operation Zero patch to be like the national symbol for veteran suicide and raise awareness, uh, donate money to uh, you know, programs that intervene in veteran suicide and just kind of break down that wall that veterans are broken or we should be discarded. There's nothing wrong with us. It's a change in American society. And, you know, we all want to be part of a brotherhood, a group, a, a tribe, as uh, some people like to say. So, and yeah, that's kind of what um, we've been doing. Since um, Greg joined us on the show a couple of times, and now you tonight, you know, um, we have gotten a lot of response in the last couple of weeks about all the different veteran organizations and how everyone's reaching out. And, you know, one of the things I'm seriously impressed with is a lot of these guys and girls now, you're right, they'll pick up the phone and they'll call a buddy and they'll get the help. And years ago, correct me if I'm wrong, but that was like an embarrassment to admit that, that someone needed help that way. So um, I really think it's exciting how people are reaching out now, aren't embarrassed, aren't ashamed, and reaching and connecting with you guys and getting the help. It's just, this is exciting. So the way you guys are taking it to the next level, let's do it. Let's do it. This is exciting. It, in, yeah. I, go ahead, my foot. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the stigmatism is still out there. I've been retired almost four years, and it wasn't until I got out of the military that I felt comfortable that it wouldn't interfere with my career to get help. And even that, getting help has been a struggle. <laughs> you know, luckily my uh, psychologist is a is a veteran himself, and you know he can tolerate me blowing up and yelling at him, and just just kind of letting go of everything that I've been holding on to for so long. He knows where you're coming from, so that's awesome. 
Yeah. Yeah. And here's, here's one of the things that we're, we're actually starting to see within the motorcycle community. You know, there's, there's guys that are out there that are kind of like independent. They're not associated with a motorcycle club or a motorcycle association or a riding association. And one of the things that's the leading cause of the suicide is a lack of connectivity. And, and some of these guys, and that's the reason why I, I come on the show, is to create that connectivity and, and kind of introduce everybody. That's like, you know, we're not just, they, they have their own, they have their own purpose and they're, you know, they're, they're out there and they want to talk to people. Um, and you, if you walk out there, if, if you're, if you're not in, in an association, actually victory's pulling on me. <laughs> You want some more crackers? Um, so, I mean, if, if you're out there and, you know, you're a veteran that's out there um, and, and you see one of us, no matter who it is or whatever club, just walk up and, and kind of introduce yourself and create that connectivity. Mm. If, if you're from another club, then, you know, my, my thought and my process is, you know, let's, you know, take off. I'm sorry. The sun was in my eyes. Um, <laughs> take off your sunglasses, walk up, walk to another club, find out what they are. And, and and introduce yourself, and let's. And we're all starting to come together as, as veterans because we're starting to see that issue. Well, awareness lets them know that they're not alone. Too. Absolutely, like they're not Absolutely. the only one going through you know, it. It, it, it. You know, whatever whatever person you may talk to, it may not be the right fit, but at least they can create connectivity. Right. So, so uh, Mudflat, we're talking about getting a, a big veterans group and all the clubs coming together and having a big um a big event and big i don't want to call it a party but a big festival celebration celebration (laughs) festival let this connection happen at this place and this time what do you think about that i think that's a good idea you know one of the biggest things like greg was saying is the isolation you know Mm -hmm. so many veterans once we get out we kind of have a harder time reaching out and, and, and introducing ourselves and meeting people sometimes, um, especially since your average American is kind of, especially in these days, isolated, and everybody kind of just stays inside their homes. And so it's, it, it definitely helps and gets veterans out. You know, a lot of different organizations do things like uh, um, bingo nights and, and uh, drinking parties and just sporting events and everything that veterans really love and get behind. So, oh, and awesome! It should be a good time. And brother, I looked at this place. It was the first time that I've been out here. Oh my gosh, we could fit two thousand motorcycles out here. We could put in one hundred and fifty vendors, and we have a band stage that's out here. I mean, this place is like dialed in. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you want to do it, I mean, we can blow this thing out. We just bring in all of the veterans clubs, and we just bring in vendors like. Let Born to Ride and Boss Hog kind of do the promotion of the platform to it because they've actually, you know, said that they're going to help supporting and marketing this piece. Absolutely. Oh, oh this th- this place is awesome. Let's do it. Mm-hmm. Sooner yeah, than sounds later. Good to me. I'm thinking. Right. Se- I'm thinking September, Ron. Yep. <laughs> he said we'll, we'll figure that out. Ron says, <laughs> "Let me get my pencil." <laughs> yeah. Since they moved uh, since they moved uh, by Oktoberfest in November, mm-hmm. I mean it, it's time to do it maybe during that period of time because this place is just is that Leesburg? It, oh yeah, let's talk about yeah. that. Yep. Everybody hear that? Leesburg Bike Fest. It's not been canceled. It's just been moved. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yep. rescheduled. Awesome. November thirteenth, fourteenth, and fifteenth. Looking forward to that. Oh, we got mm-hmm. them all here. We can mm-hmm. just <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, Mudflap, uh, thanks for calling in and making your connection to us, and we're going to keep this momentum riding and going, that's for sure. What do you think, guys? Love it. Oh, mm-hmm. absolutely. Yes. yes. Any, any well, last words, Mudflap? Take care. Any? Uh, no, not really. Just, you know, keep reaching out, you know, talk to your neighbors, just people that you had not talked to in a while, reach out to them. Mm-hmm. You know, we know suicide in general has ra- risen quite a bit in America reach out that could be that phone call that saves someone's life you know mm, awesome words yep and thanks for contributing oh, looking forward to your next article on born to ride thanks a lot all yeah right. it was a lot of fun to write thank uh, you appreciate it all right brother i'll talk to you, talk to you later all right okay. you guys take care have a good night you too, you too. Yeah. thanks yeah uh leesburg yes <clears throat> so start. now mm-hmm. that's well I hope it's starting before then, you know, I mean, in other words, with the state slowly opening up this week and things kind of changing, have y'all heard anything as far as, uh, you know, events maybe being rescheduled, things opening up, things for bikers? I know I've got a personal friend, Flying Brian, 
that uh, is uh, kind of organizing a ride this weekend. His birthday, he normally always celebrates his birthday on Leesburg. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, you know, that didn't happen. So uh, he's just going to do a little ride this weekend. So I'm sure there's uh, a lot of uh, listeners out there right now that are uh, liking the thought that there are some places that are kind of opening up and allowing some, you know, people to uh, get out and enjoy this great weather. Well, the Twilight Zone on County Line Road in Plant City and Lakeland, right on the county line, right. um, uh, called Ron and said, uh, "Ron, let's let's go. We got a summer bash. We got to get uh, get something going." So that's in the works. And uh, River's Edge Bar and Grill down um, in Gibsonton, um, they've been doing remodeling, which is nice. While they uh, they've been shut down, and uh, they said, uh, "Get the Great American Biker Bash ready to crank up and fire up in July." So. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's, it's good. It's really good. And, you know, all these events are outdoors, so it's uh, plenty of room to social distance and, and be good. Well, after being cooped up in the house, too, it's just, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's time. Well, right. and DB from the Southern Symposium, he was trying to connect with the uh, person, but uh, we had a Facebook post yesterday on the Boss Hog uh, radio page, and, uh, you know, flags for vet- for fallen veterans as, up there at Memorial uh Memorial Day weekend, mm-hmm. uh, typically up at the National Cemetery, they always go out there, and the biker community always shows up in great numbers and supports, you know, planting the flags and getting that. Well, they've postponed it, or actually they've, you know, said that it's not going to happen. They're not going to allow people to do that. And uh, we got on our little soapbox the other day and talked about that on the air and made a post. And uh I'd have to say just about everyone is in an agreement that uh, this is nonsense. I mean, it's an open, you know, there's hundreds of acres out there at that National Cemetery. And these are people that went through mustard gas, have laid on barbed wire to allow their fellow brothers to get over the wire and to battle for our freedoms and uh, you know, a lot of them, a lot of the comments on the Facebook page were, you know, well, if there's anybody that's alive that's a patriot, they'll be there irregardless. You know, now I'm not sure, you know, and again, that's where we're trying to find out and get some more information to get out the, the word. But uh, I was very upset to find out that that has been postponed, you know, this Memorial Day. I just very is putting it lightly <laughs> yeah i yeah really aggravated about that well that's that's one um, memorial we don't want to overlook and miss so carry on we've got to absolutely got i mean to just it, proceed have you ever uh, been a part of that uh yeah there I, greg i mean i, I have and uh but but actually, one of my triggers is being inside of a cemetery. So I, I I try to. Avoid I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So so we'll we'll do like a you know, a memorial event, and then my brothers will go. And you know I, I'm I'm completely honest and open with my you know, my PTSD because of the guys that I lost and when I was in the military. So that's one of my triggers. I stay away from it. But they'll they'll go out. They'll do you know the memorial part of it, and then they'll just come back. And I usually end up, I'm the guy on the grill. Okay. So, so, there you go. so, so I'm creating the food when they That's get back. Grill so, grill yeah. master yeah. Greg. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so it's a silver lining to you know, yeah. to having that. That's yeah. an important part. Yeah. Yep. It's a very oh, absolutely. Good part. Yeah. yeah. Well, good. But good job. I, and I think there's actually going to be a lot of smaller um, events that are going to be out there. Individual clubs, individual writing associations, and that kind of stuff. They're going. They're still going to honor. You know, our fallen veterans during that time. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I think that that's uh, it, it's still going to happen. It just may not happen in such a big way. And then I, I hope that the bigger events will actually get postponed. And you know, if, if they have to, and then we just redo it again. Like, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Awesome. Good. Well, it is uh, about time to take a short little break. All right. You're listening to Boss Hog R- Radio. And this is Born to Ride radio program, the weekly one. I goofed that one up completely there. (laughs) Goofed that one up. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) (laughs) Got so many things going on. Okay, let's reset here. Okay, you're (laughs) you're listening to Born to Ride radio on the Boss Hog Radio Network. We're going to be back in just a moment. 
Don't go anywhere, folks. Get yourself together, Fester. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's going cute. from one program right into another. He's That's like, cute. breather, huh? breathe. I said, you're going from one program, actually two, because he does the ride home. <laughs> then he goes right into the, sorry, Taylor, I know, we're just. Steve. Okay. What? Are you good? Does anyone need a snack? I'll pass them down. Oh, no, I'm good. I'm Here you go, Fester. What's up, Tater? Oh, I'm I'm great. No, right you're now. good. I mean, oh, yeah, I'm fine. Well, thank you. You didn't. Have no, you to go do right this. ahead, guys. <laughs> I feel like I need to eat it all for it. Yeah. <laughs> you did, you did well, some work. Good. <laughs> Actually, Victory likes it. He's been wandering around looking <laughs> like for more snacks. Victory. 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 Little spaz. He started pulling so it around. How was your guys this week? On. Good. Yeah, we're we are putting out the May magazine. We 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 delayed it a little bit because we weren't sure. People were saying, "Hold on, we might be open, might not." Let's get the word out, and we just had to have a cutoff date and move forward. So we've been doing that, trying to put that together. So other than that, you know, it's been a good week. You guys, everybody, staying healthy? Yeah, for the most part. Your shiner shiner looks pretty good. Yes, this week. it's yeah. it's healed up. My hands. Where? There it is. Okay, good grief. <laughs> Here I am. This place does rock. <laughs> My gosh. So the official of this place out here to do a... Oh, man. <laughs> I got a little chubby walking around. You know, I was pretty excited. <laughs> Yeah, it's a nice property out here. Well, there's, did you see that site? There's yeah. more over there, too. Mm-hmm. Like, it's Yeah, awesome. I've already calculated. It's like 150 <laughs> vendors can go out there. Yeah, yeah I've already done it. Does Ron want to sit? Hmm. Ron, do you want to get on for a minute? Okay. Welcome back to Born to Ride Radio on the Boss Hog Radio Network. I'm Fester Jenkins. I'm Mama Dukes. And in the studio, we've got Greg Blackweld hey and guys. Debbie Galetti. Born Ron's in the ride. background just uh, doing his thing there. Bossing us around. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping us straight. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, if you want to join the conversation, the f- studio phone line number is 863-225-2000. That's 863-225-2000. Off the uh, during the commercial break, we were talking Debbie about uh, the uh, latest edition of Born to Ride magazine. It's- yes, it's uh, um, uh, making its way on the streets now. Um, we gave uh, a lot of our advertisers just a little bit of time to see if they were reopening, had any announcements to make. But some great content, great stories. Greg made a nice contribution, nice content story. Um, but we do have a new ad in this month, and it's for a Born to Ride biker cruise coming in 2021. Oh, wow. Ah. Who likes to cruise? Yay. Oh, wow. Yeah. Are we allowed to take our motorcycles? <laughs> well, I don't think the motorcycles go on the cruise ship. It's a Norwegian cruise ship. It's a new one, so I'm it's sure really you nice. Rent something similar. But there are, off, yes, maybe. there are stops. So it's supposedly there's some arrangements maybe at stops and that ah, type of thing. Okay. Yeah, awesome. so it'll be exciting. Sounds great. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Expedia Cruise Partners is putting that together and uh, along with uh, Born to Ride, we're partnering with them and uh, some just fun things on the cruise. There's going to be a singles night, meet and greet, some poker walks and some uh, tattoo contests and some art exhibits and that type of thing. So it'll be fun. Mm. Something different. Oh, nice. 2021. Oh, yeah. You had me at singles night. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. So, um they, uh, it's a, a new ship, so there's hot tubs and all kinds of laser tag, and there's go kart racing, and fourteen bars, nightclubs, and of course a casino, twenty eateries. There you go. So it's one big boat. Yes, That's so crazy. And the uh, is the date been set for uh, this particular cruise? Or yes, February twenty fourth through March first in twenty twenty one. Okay, so plenty um, of time. Yes. plenty of time yep. to. Uh, Make arrangements and figure it, and certainly we ought to be back on our feet by then, I would imagine. Oh, yes. yeah. 
And that'll be oh, in the edition, so. new edition, the May edition of yes. the Born to Ride magazine. It'll be online and everything, yes. So that's exciting. Um, it, it was exciting to hear that the the cruise industry is already booking up quickly. You know, people are already ready to get back to cruising, so why not a Barker cruise? Okay. I wonder Let's go. about how many yeah. people. Do you know, uh, like, average how many? The, cru- the cruise <laughs> holds? Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm not sure, but they're, they're holding... Um, uh, several cabins for a, a biker group. Okay. So, and in the hundreds, put yes. it that way, is what okay. I understand. Yeah. Okay. So, awesome. Pretty good size. The uh, you could see the picture of the boat right here. Uh, <laughs> see that? <yeah. laughs> it's nice. big boat. <laughs> Leather vest, flip flops, and, and speedos. Yeah, I can see oh, it. Wow. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got a visual on that one, Greg. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Every single lady out there is rushing to get there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I think we have to bring in Greg some, um, you know, cruise attire. <laughs> At least put palm trees or something on those speedos. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh my. Okay. I'm just, now Fester's I'm at a got loss the of visuals now. Okay. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Yeah, you can't unthink that image. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> also, in May's issue, um, Angel City. In, uh, Angel City is in Unadilla, Georgia, which is probably about an hour north of the Florida-Georgia line. And they have events twice a year, spring and fall. And um, their spring event got pushed back. So now they're going to make it a spring beach party uh, on June 17th to the 21st. So that's in the magazine also. So awesome. their event is kicked back up, too. Okay, Good. Yes. Super, super virtual uh, bike contest bike show oh How's yes that going going great Update. going great there's two pages in the magazine with everyone that submitted their photos of their okay. bikes that's nice and it'll continue into may and also for may of course is mother's day yes. happy mother's yes. day to us this sunday <laughs> yes yep. sunday may 10th and um, born to ride did a shout out you know you got a mom that's a biker and she rides uh, drop a pic and we're gonna you know Supporter. Oh, awesome. Yep. That's awesome. Okay. So, Born to Ride's Mother's Day. <laughs> you guys have big okay. plans? No. You know, um, I'm a baseball mom and a biker and a Born to Ride mom, and so I work all week, and weekends are taken up with the baseball field and the bike events, so usually on Mother's Day, I'm like, I just want to sit home. <laughs> <laughs> I've been sitting home for six weeks now, but I still want to sit home. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> It's an ugly day. It's not a pretty sight. No. It's your day. It's so a, that's, that's all that matters. How about you, Mom Dukes? Are they going to spoil you this weekend? Um, I don't know. We're supposed to be going out to Hernando Beach for the weekend. Yep. As long as everything stays as right. As long as everything yeah. stays normal here. Yeah. I plan on doing a little bit of flats fishing on the boat. Oh, the nice. Weekend. There you go. So. And it's speed. No, I don't wear speed. So. <laughs> yeah, so hopefully... It, so far, everything. One more day. Mm-hmm. As long yeah. as we get through tomorrow and everything's too smooth selling, we'll, we'll be out there. Awesome. That'll be a nice day. Yeah. But, well, just so you know, I do have extra room in my freezer. <laughs> okay. So, so if you bring anything back. <laughs> okay. I was like, for what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For, no. uh, what, what, what kind of fishing is that? Uh, You know, red, Spanish mackerel. Nice. You know, just whatever happens to be biting. All right, I think, you know, I, think I, I usually gear up and I'm prepared for whatever it might be biting there from that standpoint. And so. the grill master over here can cook it up for us, right? Mm-hmm. I can do it. Mm-hmm. I got I'll the... tell you what. Fish grilled, mm-hmm. if you haven't ever had it, uh, I mean, I personally like it that mm-hmm. way. I mean, in other words, you know, it, you can't hardly mess up anything if you fry it. But I mean, uh, just, you know, healthier, it's better for you. And uh, a little bit of lemon, grill it, throw it on the grill. Mm mm mm. That's it's a awfully good. Sauce. You, you bring, <laughs> if you bring me, bring me back some mackerel, I'll smoke it for you. I've got the world's best smoked fish. Oh, still. smoked Spanish mackerel. I'm okay. thinking we're going to have a born to ride recipe exchange <laughs> here going on. <laughs> <laughs> you guys Sounds have got it good. going. Yep. Mm, mm, mm. I've been cooking for six weeks straight, and I'm, <laughs> I am out of options. And, and she's the, like, "I need ideas." I know. There you go. The smiles at the dinner table are getting very fake now. Oh, mom, uh, this is good. I can see it now. Biker menu and born to ride. Yeah, let's do it. We'll put yeah. together a little cookbook. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I'm yeah. sure there'll be a lot of alcohol in some of those recipes, <laughs> well, but what the heck, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> oh gosh, fun, fun. Oh, um, absolutely, yeah. 
Also, we have in the magazine this month a two-page article about riding the Appalachians uh, in uh, the Virginia area, West Virginia area, um, all the back roads and everything. So uh, if you're planning some summer trips, that's a, that's a nice area, too. Everybody likes the tail of the dragon and everything, but the Appalachians are great, too. Yep. Uh, is the dragon tail open back up? The last word I heard was they had closed it. I haven't heard on that. I just heard Maggie Valley okay. opened this week, uh, Dale's. Uh, Wheels Through Time Museum. Have you ever been there? I have not been there, no. Uh, oh, that's a trip. If you ever want to take a great trip, it's a museum of all American-made motorcycles back from the, oh, 40s, 50s, back in that era. Mm-hmm. Dale and his son run it, and the the museum itself is just absolutely stunning. It's, everything's period, uh, air period, so if a bike is from the 40s, the oil can that goes with it's from the 40s. They have mm-hmm. outfits next to it, you know, riding outfits at the time. So, And that's where? In uh, Maggie Valley, North Carolina. That is a great bucket list trip. Sounds Dale's a great. genius. Yeah. And if there's a particular bike you like in the museum, you want to hear it cranked up, Dale will fire it up. And, and the whole museum will have fumes in it, and everybody loves it. <laughs> <laughs> it is awesome. He kicks, kicks all those bikes, too. He and his son work on them and kick them. Hmm. That's nice awesome. Bikes. Yeah. Definitely going to have to add that to the list of, of things to do. Yeah. We're going to have to have Dale call in because he does a real nice antique motorcycle giveaway every year, too. The summertime, of course, is his biggest tour season. I would so, imagine yeah. so, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's a that great area. in the fall, the leaves changing and everything, I would imagine, mm-hmm. too. But uh, no, awesome. Greg, what's going on with you? I know we uh, had mud flap in earlier, but. Uh, well, yeah, you know, I usually spend about four to five hours a day just talking to you know different different brothers from different clubs. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Um, it's not Corona, by the way. No, just, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's that cracker you've been gnawing on there. A, yeah, really. My my throat's a little dry. Um, but uh, it, inside the MC world, um, I can tell you that you know a lot of the clubs have kind of just like kept their distance. Um, some of the some of the clubs that are out there have like older members. And yes, so, so, so they, they put off having meetings and put off having, you know, rides and stuff. Some are, some are meeting together and, and since, thank you. uh, some are meeting, you know, just like gas stations, just so we can see each other. Some, some are Facebooking and FaceTiming and just, but we're spending a lot of time on the radio, but I, I, I tell you, or not on the radio, but on the phone. Um, but I can tell you that everybody's itching to get out there. You know, they, they, they want to protect their older brothers, so they, they're trying to do the social distancing thing, which is, you know, I guess appropriate. But every one of us, every one of us is waiting to get out and just say, you know, turn it on. We're waiting for, like, the, the stops to open up that we always go to. You know, the guys that are over in, you know, River's Edge and, and mm-hmm. those places and stuff, we're just waiting for them to just go, like, full tail boogie. And as soon as we do that, I'm, we need to tell these, uh, these bar and restaurant owners, to get ready mm-hmm. because oh, absolutely I mean, yeah and I mean, go ahead yeah yeah no, so it, it's it, we're just kind of like just sitting and waiting and then once we do it once we know that we're okay then you know off we're gonna go you yeah. know being part of uh, the boss hog radio network and watching and keeping listeners of uh, all of boss hog radio aware of what's going on i just no word yet from uh, Governor Ronnie as far as when Phase Two comes in. I like you know, that nickname you gave him last <laughs> week, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Governor Ronnie. <laughs> oh my goodness! But uh, with Phase Two, they are expecting to uh, have you know the bars and the nightclubs part of that phase, and uh, they're uh, I saw fifty fifty percent occupancy is what they were expecting, but uh, no word as to a timeline from that standpoint there you know I hope everyone's patient too while they these bars and restaurants get back on their feet because a lot of their workers had to seek work elsewhere during this time, mm-hmm. so they're they're trying to find you know gather their workers back together, their bartenders, their staff. And some are short, and they're trying to find others and train them at the same time. They're trying to get the doors open. So if everybody has patience, I think it would, it would be a great hurdle to get over. So Yeah, that's very important. Mm-hmm. It's a stressful time for all of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's going to be a transition. I yes. Mean, you're going to have, you know, some of these, um, the, the food servers and the bartenders and stuff, I mean, they're, they're right now on unemployment. Most of them aren't getting their checks yet. But mm-hmm. the, 
once if they come back at 25 percent, they're only serving you know a quarter of the people so their tips are down so it's like do i stay and wait until there's like the 50 percent or the 100 percent where i can make more money or do i stay on unemployment so i mean it's it's going to be kind of an impact you know on on how they phase that in mm -hmm. at least that's my opinion uh it's it i a politician right now i would not want to be you know, I've never had any desire of political office, but I mean, that's just, it's got to be a tough, a tough, tough, tough job right now. I mean, it's, you know, no one has the answers and we're all figuring this out as we go along and uh, everyone has an opinion, just like they've got a, you know, a butthole there, you know, so yep. it's uh, an earlobe an opinion. Ear <laughs> everyone has an earlobe. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you went, you went there, Fester. <laughs> That's the first time I've heard that, though. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's the mom's version. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I have to remember that. <laughs> I, I won't start using that. <laughs> the earlobe? Oh, okay. No, no. <laughs> Go for it. No. No. <laughs> Hello, caller. You're on the air. Hi, this is Laura with Expedia Cruise Ship Centers. Oh, well, hey, we were Laura. just talking about you, Laura, and, and everything's coming together nicely on the Border Ride Biker Cruise, but you have all the details. Fill us in. Okay, well, we are so excited to be doing this and to be doing this with you guys. Uh, if nobody has something to do on February 24th of 2021, we're going to be leaving out of Miami on Norwegian's beautiful Encore. It's one of their newest ships, uh, one of their largest ships. It's got the go-kart track. It's got the virtual reality room, escape room laser tag, plus all the shows and bars and things to do. There's 20 different places to eat, 14 different bars. There's nightclubs, gym, spa, oh, my gosh, pools, hot tubs, and the cabins are great. Uh, the shows, they have kinky boots, if anybody has ever seen anything about that. The happy hour prohibition, which is quite a... Uh, Quite a show to see. <laughs> Choir of men. And then we're going to have all kinds of games and fun things to do. Now, Laura, has the destinations been decided? In other words, where are, where's the cruise taking? The ports. You? The ports. Okay. We're going to go to Costa Maya, Mexico. And there is the availability to rent bikes or scooters there. But there's also a lot of really cool places to go and things to see, shore excursions. And one thing that you get included if you take a balcony cabin is you get a $50 credit towards any shore excursion that you take. Mm. And then our other port is Harvest K, which is in Belize, and that's a private island of Norwegian. And we have a designated area on the beach with cabanas and all of our fun stuff to do there. Awesome. Sounds like a uh, fantastic cruise. Yes. I, I'm still stuck it on the sing be. I'm still stuck on the singles night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, tell us more. Tell yeah. us more. Greg's coming yeah. off of six yeah. weeks of Corona <laughs> diet, ready for the singles on the beach. <laughs> With his speedo. You want to go to the singles meet and greet and the singles social? Is that what I hear? That's what, <laughs> yes. Greg said sign him up. Yep. Okay, well, can we auction you off? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> One dollar <laughs> sold. <laughs> yep, we're going to be doing an auction to raise money for charities, and it will be a date with someone for dinner one night on the cruise. I'm I'm all in. Okay. <laughs> I'm all in. Nice. <laughs> He's got a smile. Like, yeah. Where do I sit? <laughs> <laughs> one of the cool activities that we have planned besides tattoo contests, uh, a pub crawl, uh, there's a lot of different things, scavenger hunt, so there'll be plenty of things to do, but then if you just want to go up on the Serenity area and hide in the sun and relax, you can do that too. And, and Laura, I think it's cool because you are actually a biker yourself, so you know what yeah. the bikers are going to be looking for, so we can trust you to put this together and it's be awesome. <laughs> It will be fun. Mm -hmm. We will make sure that it's fun, and we've got a lot of great people going. I've got people right now as far away as Can Kansas that have booked their, their cabins. So oh, nice. I'm excited. That we're we're going to get to meet a lot of people. And I'm telling you, the people that I've talked to on the phone 
I can't wait to meet these people. How many uh, cabins do you have booked just for the biker party? For, we have 85 cabins reserved. It's a $50 per person deposit to put down to hold your cabin. The final payment isn't due until November 15th of 2020. You can cancel, get your $50 back anytime up till then. Once you've paid in full, uh, <clears throat> then if you take out the insurance, then you can cancel. You know, they have like insurance that you can have for cancel for any reason. Mm -hmm. And the price, wait till you hear this. Are you sitting down? Okay. A balcony, a balcony midship for two people that includes taxes, fees, gratuities, your beverage package, which is the ultimate beverage package, two nights of upgraded dining in the private restaurants of your choice, Wi-Fi, $50 short excursion credit, and admission to the go-karts, virtual reality room, and laser tag, which there's usually a charge. For two people in the cabin, it's $2,320.46. That's a really good price. Yeah, mm -hmm. for you and a friend, that's about a thousand dollars each. Yep. And, uh, oh, uh, uh, Mama Dukes is going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fester, you and I are splitting this. <laughs> you are <Okay>. in there, <laughs> Laura. Can yeah. you uh, talk about some of the misconceptions about cruises, please? Okay, uh, misconceptions as in sicknesses, people getting sick, or uh, I believe that's what they were whispering in my ear there from that standpoint oh, okay. there. <laughs> Okay. Every day I get emails, every day we get updates as travel agents directly from the ship lines. We also get them from CLIA, the Cruise Line Industries Association, which is who I'm certified through as a travel agent. Um, they are telling us that there will be a new norm to cruising, that your cabins will be done two, three, maybe four times a day, totally disinfected. Anything on the ship that is handled, as in doorknobs, handrails, the buttons on the elevators, they will be disinfected constantly all day long. The little, I don't know, have you all been cruising before? Yes, I have. Okay, you know how you try to go, like, maybe just walk through the buffet because you want to go to the pool or something, and the, the people are there going washy-washy? <laughs> right. You're right. You can't, I mean, you're going to be hearing washy-washy everywhere you go. <laughs> They're going to stop you. They're going to make you wash your hands. They're going to make you use sanitizer. They're going to be having the sanitizing stations are going to be in more places than what they usually are. They also will have people, um, even when I went out on the last one, they had people that actually sprayed your hands. They don't let you just walk by thinking you're going to use it and you don't. They actually are going to stop you and spray your hands or make you wash your hands. Um, as what we're hearing for possibly getting on the cruises, they'll be, you'll be assigned a time that you can come and board, which will keep less people in the terminal at the same time. You probably will have to fill out more documentation about have you been sick. Some cruise lines might even ask you to bring um, a letter from your doctor saying that you're fit for cruising. And they also might even take your temperature. So things are going to be a lot different. And when they first start out, they won't be at full capacity. They yeah. will not have every cabin booked. They will keep it back. Just like your restaurants are only allowing like 25% people inside the restaurants. Um, there will be um, a cutback on how many are cruising at first. Now, as far as somebody who's like, um, this is their first cruise, or they have questions as far as like, you know, being confined to a boat. When I've been on one, so I understand like the size of them. But for somebody new to it who hasn't ever seen like the inside, um, <clears throat> what would you say to them? Like as far as like seasickness, it's not like being on an open boat out in the, you know, out in the middle of the water. Somebody, you know, a first timer going on one. A first timer, I would say that they want to take advantage of the mid. Uh, they want to not be too high up, and they want to be center of the ship. 
I always recommend if they've never cruised before that they might want to get a prescription from their doctor for the little patch that goes behind your ear because that seems to work on everybody. These ships are huge. You don't feel the motion like you used to when you used to go out on the ones like when Carnival came out with their the Carnival and the Mardi Gras that were maybe like 35,000 tons. You're talking like 160,000 tons now of ship. So when you're inside, the hallways are so large, and the observation areas, your pool area, everything is so high and so open that you do not even feel like you're in a ship. You, you kind of feel like you're on a main street walking downtown. Uh, this particular ship has some amazing, amazing places to go on it. Uh, it's, it's just a lot of fun. Well, that was a great update, Laura. And um, how do they book it and where do they call? They can call my cell phone number is 813-892-0336. Or they can email me at lgoodsell, G-O-O-D-S-E-L-L, at cruiseshipcenters.com. And I'd be happy to get back with them and help them make their reservations or even just answer any questions all if right they just have questions and want to know you know what to bring and mm -hmm. i'll be sending out stuff all along the way kind of uh not babysitting but kind of helping you along with for first time cruisers especially with like ideas of what to pack what you don't need to bring what you should bring um little tips and things like that and we'll try to put some stuff out on the uh Born to Ride Bikers Cruise page. Okay. That's yeah. out. Yes, that's a, a group you can join on Facebook as well. Or always contact borntoride.com, and uh, we'll have a lot of information there, too. But, uh, Laura, thanks for checking in and giving us all the details. Let's go cruising. Come cruise with us. I am ready. I am so ready to get out of the house. <laughs> all right. We'll I'm check in. To party. Uh, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Laura. Thank you. Uh -huh. All righty. We'll be right back with more of Born to Ride Radio. Born to Ride Magazine, the number one biker magazine that delivers dynamic content for you, the reader, every this, month, has done it again. <laughs> Stronger than Is ever, powered by Rubenstein Law. See the April 2020 place? issue online and on the streets featuring Vigilante Motor Works on the cover with Crystal Maiden. John Bonner is a fabricator builder featured from Chaparama. And Eric Runyon nails the cover shot. Appalachian Backroads, Virginia is for motorcycle lovers. Learn about a ride that has three mountains, 438 curves, and 32 miles. Nefarious James, real deal, loyal to the bone. Check out his new column, Unspoken Responsibility. Get ready for tattoo portrait photo series from Nick Airmine. Unbelievable, like never before seen. Tattoo artwork, photography that Born to Ride delivers for you, the reader. Bam! Bam! Plus more, more content, more dynamic images, eight pages of Bike Week 2020. And did you see Miss Liberty? The Rubenstein Law, cartel bagger, bill that was everywhere at Bike Week. And time for an industry report. The Phenom, Tiny Trailer Nation. Randy Klaus delivers the goods you need to know to get your tiny trailer for a third of the price of a toy hauler. So read it, watch it, write it, plus so much more. Born to Ride, April 2020 issue on the streets and online now. For you, the reader. It's a week long, right? Hi, what I I'm attorney I Robert Rubenstein, also... and this is Rubenstein's Rules for Personal Injury. Rule number one, get an attorney. When you or a loved one have been injured by another's negligence, an experienced attorney can make a huge difference. At Rubenstein Law, we will find all of the insurance, make sure your injuries Wait, are do documented, you ever, um, and work do to get you the best result. The guy While knows? each case is different, yes. okay. a well-known insurance I, company's own a, study a, a showed people with a lawyer there, on average there's, there's got seven, more money. Yeah, Call yeah, Rubenstein Law at 1-800-FL-LEGAL. It's Born to Ride, the safe at home bike show. A 10 class bike show for you to easily enter. Best of all, it's absolutely free. Just enter your photos of your motorcycle with your name, make, and model to our direct message, Facebook, or Instagram. Best of show to be featured with a photo shoot by Eric Runyon for the cover of Born to Ride magazine. So be a part of the Born to Ride safe at home bike show. 
victory puppies and a Labrador retriever. Oh, okay. Our children come from different backgrounds with different stories. As they develop, they learn time honored values six, like the importance of faith, hard work, and that an education is something no one can take away. They learn that respect oh, begins with themselves oh, and should be given to others. The Florida Sheriff's Youth Ranches, where kids learn, laugh, and dream with people who refuse to give up on them. With your donation today, we can give them a brighter tomorrow. Welcome back to Born to Ride Radio. I am Fester Jenkins. I'm Mama Dukes, and we're in the studio with um, Debbie Gluddy from Born to Ride. And Greg Blackwell. Welcome back, Greg. Hey, guys. Thanks. Ron's here, too. He's yep. just in the yeah, back. He's, he's in the back. He's, he's <laughs> telling us what to say. <laughs> I, I got to get a shirt for the, the, the events coming up this year, and it's on the back I'm going to put, I don't know where Ron's at. That's going to be on the back of the shirt. That's the question I always get. Where's Ron? I don't know where Ron's at. He ditches me all the time. <laughs> he's somewhere. <laughs> um, Greg has a victory with him today, and victory is his support dog. And uh, Greg, uh, Victory is just beautiful. How how long have you had Victory? Uh, for two years. And um, so, uh, what classification is Victory as Vic- as a support dog? Victory is a service dog. So Victory actually performs tasks just like a medical piece of equipment. He's not only my companion, but he's also a he helps me with um, post traumatic stress. So he's he's trained and designed to wake me up at night for nightmares. He knows when. I, I start getting a little anxious by the movements that I do in my hands. You can see where sometimes I'll raise my hand up to my, my chest. Well, when I start getting stressed, that's what I do, and it's his trigger to, to come by and get in front of me. And then if I start, like, moving my fingers, he's trained to actually come up and grab my wrist, which means I'm getting a little more anxious. Um, he's also, when we walk into large groups, uh, he'll, he'll come in behind me and – he always walks, uh, my, my leash is behind him, so if somebody's coming up behind me, he'll come in and actually block, and then it lets me know that somebody's there, then I can just say, you know, I'm good, and then he just comes right back to heel. So he's been, he's been trained to, to mitigate all of the, the issues that I have with PTSD, and I, I'm not embarrassed to say it. I mean, I spent 11 years in the special operations world, and, you know, I lost uh, quite a few in there, and then I've also lost some people outside the civilian world. So that's what caused it. And so I'm not embarrassed to say that I have it. Absolutely not. Uh, there's, there's, there's no real 100% treatment for it, you know, but I can tell you what, having a service dog that's trained well, uh, when I was in the VA before I had my service dog, I was probably on, I think, seven or eight, seven or eight different medications. And since I've had him, he's kind of mitigated all of those. The only thing I take now is just vitamins. So, awesome. Yeah, so... I mean, there's a, there, there's a lot of opportunities for things that are out there. Uh, the VA right now um, for the veterans has not recognized service dogs, although I have it in my records that my, my team has said, you know, they, that, that I needed one, and they've actually documented the success. So, I mean, they're, they're, they're heading towards that process. Your, your team of doctors, <laughs> I yes. assume, is what you're yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah, so my team of doctors, a psychiatrist, psychologist, and two mental health care workers, you know, it's – it's the price that you pay. I don't care. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that's they're, they're they're starting to look where you can actually they're, they're they're going through some trials, but there's a lot of political stuff that's involved in you know qualifications for a service dog and that kind of stuff. And there's other versions of uh, of dogs that help. Um, there's emotional support dogs like like Victory here can travel with me everywhere. Um, you know we've flown to Houston and Rhode Island and gone out to California together and he actually flies on the airplane with me. He's authorized to do that. Um, inside of restaurants, uh, you know, in hotels, you know, they, they can't deny him to be there because he's actually considered a medical device. And you've got another version that's called an emotional support animal. And, and that's the, you know, they don't have the, the certification. Or there, actually, there is no real certifications right now. But they, an emotional support animal is an animal that's trained to kind of keep people calm. You know, those are the ones that you see that go into hospitals and you know, visit with patients and stuff. And there's a process that's that. And then, you know, then others are just pets. So, 
there's a lot of fundraisers in the motorcycle community to, to raise funds for these dogs to train them. I know it's an expensive process. Well, well, it's an incredibly expensive expensive process. Like Victory is probably um, the total cost to get him completely trained was close to twenty five thousand dollars. Now I was lucky enough that. <clears throat> If you see on his back, he's got a patch that says Victory for 22. That came, that came from the Helping Out Our American Hero uh, Foundation. It, uh, it's a ranger buddy of mine that started um, a, a foundation that helps veterans get help with PTSD, and there's a treatment facility up in Newport Ritchie. Um, it's called uh, Veterans Alternative, and it's one of the greatest um, psychiatrists that's out there, and he has like a retreat for veterans. So, But when they found out that, that, that I needed one because of my connection within the motorcycle community and the veterans community, um, helping out our American heroes stepped up and said, we're going to pay for the dog, which is, you know, victory's not cheap. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, he's, he's not a cheap dog, but then it's the training, it's the, the maintenance, it's the, you know, hiring the people to come in and train. So by the time that you get them to the point where they're, you know, fully trained, you're, you're, you're close to 25, sometimes even $40,000. How long does that process take to train? How, old, how old is Victory? So, well, Victory, I was lucky with, with Victory. Um, I, had, I had just done a fundraiser um, with another organization to, to raise money for um, a service dog. And then when I, they found out or they identified that I needed one, um, I was actually given the option, and mine's different the way the victory was. So we had a, a very high-end breeder that knew what service dogs were, and I, I kind of signed an agreement with him that he would go through the training process with me, and I would have trainers come in. So it's like kind of like a train-the-trainer process. And so, I mean, and then from there, usually when you get your, your service dog, um, it's, it's a process to go through. But it takes about two years to get the dogs trained up to where they need to be so they can perform the tasks. I assume because they have to be acclimated to the end user anyhow, well, correct? Well, they I do. Mean, there's, a, there's, another, you know, there's another process after that. So the, the dog, or the, the, the service animal will get you know, trained up to a certain point, and then you start going into the process of having the dog you know, learn you. So they'll, they'll have the tasks done, and then you have to start spending a lot of time with the trainers to, to go through the transition process before they hand them off to you. You know, there, there's different ways that you can get um, a service animal for those guys that are out there, and, and I can tell you it's not an easy process. Um, it's, and thinking it's really cool to have a dog that's with you, you're talking about, you know, 45 minutes every day just to get started to do the work, to reinforce the tasks. And then you're out there, you're training with them all the time. In, in the evenings, it's, it's still the same thing. So it, it's not like something where it's like, hey, I've got my pet just, you know, walking through the store kind of thing. They, they have specific tasks that are there. Now, when the, when the ideal of you getting a service dog first come about, mm-hmm. were you kind of, you know, like, ah, this might not work for me. You know, I don't think a dog could stop my triggers. Or did you? Well, Actually, you know, I'd been looking at it for several years, but I just didn't, I didn't understand the process and how to get one. And when I had, you know, when they identified that I needed it, um, then I just, you know, I said, yeah, I, th- I think I'm going to give it a try. And, and I did. And there's different, there's different ways to do it. It's out there. And actually, you know, if they want to contact, you know, Born to Ride, every dog has its own, you know, training sit- training schedule everybody has their own needs whether it's a mobility dog or a guide dog or whether it's a psychiatric dog or even identifying you know if the guys have you know you know diabetes there's dogs that you can train to actually sense diabetes so they're they're all different so you just have to find the right person the right fit amazing okay well we're coming to the end uh we got our last break and uh (laughs) we'll be right back I enjoyed it. If I take his vest off, he, 
You've been listening to Born to Ride Radio here on the Boss Hog Radio Network every Thursday evening from 7 till 8. I'm Fester Jenkins. I want to just say uh, appreciate uh, Ron, Debbie, and uh, Glenn being in the studio this evening. Greg. Greg. <laughs> That's okay. I answered anything. So he knows, like, Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Yep. Yeah. See, I'll tell him 